thank you, Hanno, for the great introduction. I'm, I'm really honored to be here, and thank you very much. Uh, since I came here in 2008, the first time, and uh, we, we started discussions how to support Isti Energia on its new development for the uh, oil shale, oil oil of oil shale industry. Uh, we had, as in every long-term relationships, a, a lot of ups and downs, and, but I'm always happy to come here to see a lot of known faces, but also curious to learn about uh, the new faces and the new colleagues and uh, about the, uh, the way and the strategic way forward of ST Energia. Um, one of our core um, uh, figures or our core assumptions in Autotech is the sustainability. And if you uh, have time and interest to go to our website, you feel will find a lot of background information. I think we can talk about uh, uh, hours about uh, what, is, uh, what does sustainability mean in our industry, especially when, we c when it comes to uh, things like mining and uh, uh, big plants and uh, power production and, and these kind of things. Uh, but there are certain acknowledgements also from these uh, sustainability communities who demonstrate this. Uh, so, um, let me uh, introduce, I have been asked to, uh, to focus on a few questions. So, for example, why, is, uh, why does we see us as a sustainable technology provider for the oil shale industry? What is the background in the development um, uh, to, be auto to have Autotech as a development partner? Um, so, what, do ex what kind of experience do we have from other technology, from other technology developments? I have brought an example with me. And uh, what is our interest as Autotech to be um, a, a public company, uh, to be uh, investing in the development and uh, to be a long-term partner for a company like ST Energia? And uh, I have also brought with me some uh, technology uh, slides uh, which can show you a little bit what are the differentiating factors uh, in, in, the, in the industry. Um, let me focus here only on one thing. As a global leader in the minerals and metals where Autotech is known as, uh, we have also developed a lot of breakthrough technologies. Uh, over the years, and um, and uh, this is basically our our main asset that we have the knowledge and the people, and also the right mindset uh, to invest in new technologies. And I will focus on a few examples. Um, so, but what is the driver nowadays when people talk about sustainability and uh, uh, how to decouple the economic growth and the ecological? footprint, what is the main issue. So uh, there is a publication and it says that the mankind is in the moment using about 1.5 uh, times more the resources of the earth um, than uh, what is sustainable. So if we have an increase in social welfare and nobody will uh, put the question on this, that everybody in, in on its globe should share this, uh, then we have to decouple the traditional environmental input, what comes with this. Uh, and, and this goes only if we put in more efficient technologies, more cleaner technologies, uh, and also using resources what have been not used uh, so far. So what I, I talked a little bit about uh, Autotech uh, being uh, a driver for developments. And uh, we were always coming from the technology angle, and we have been engineers, process engineers mainly, but also all kinds of other disciplines. And so we were always reli reliable to have a partner when, when investing, when it comes to investment in new technologies. And we had been, and this goes first, fluidized bed pyrite roaster with BASF or zinc roaster with Velmontagne. These kind of plants, they go back in the 1950s. Uh, but Believe it or not, last year we commissioned uh, a copper roaster uh, in, in Chile, which is now dealing and has been uh, adapted to treat high arsenic ores, which is, a, is nowadays a common uh, problem. 
years after, uh, and decades ago, nobody touched it because on its uh, environmental uh, criticalness. And, but nowadays, technologies are available uh, to treat this. Uh, other um, uh, developments have been with VAW on the circulating fluidized bed, uh, not only for the alumina calcination, but also for producing energy. So the first CFP power plant has been developed in a predecessor of, of Autotech, Lurgi Metallurgy, back in the 1980s. Um, we have, of course, other um, um, partnerships where, where we developed something and, of course, uh, very proud with AST Energia to have been developed together uh, the uh, oil shale processing and the FIT 280. We have also, as, as you have and you have mentioned, a network with universities which also helps us to not only to get new ideas uh, but also to have the equipment and the knowledge and the people resource uh, to, uh, to join us later to be able to be innovative. Um, just a few uh, listed reference plans, and I mentioned um, that, for example, um, there had been uh, roasting plants built, uh, I think there are uh, close to 300 fluidized bed roasting plants for copper, zinc, and other ores have been built. Uh, we have CFP calcination plants. I've not put in any power plants because, because this has been uh, moved to uh, also in the early 80s to assist the company of Lurgi and is not longer with us, but we have been started to be still active in this again. And we have now by an acquisition also waste to energy plants, fluidized bed energy systems, which can be used for all kinds of waste mainly, of course, sorted waste because it's a fluidized bed, and we just have got uh, in the UK uh, uh, four new contracts uh, of uh, building such uh, energy plants, small decentralized energy plants in the range of 10 to 15 megawatt. In 2009, uh, there was an agreement that uh, Esti Energia and Autotech um, forms a joint venture, uh, it's called Enefit Autotech Technologies, EOT, and both companies contributed basically to this company, Estia Energia, mainly by its experience on oil shale, uh, on the production of oil out of oil shale, and uh, how to build up um, uh, 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 projects and also on a global um, on a global scale. And Autotech brought in its experience in the fluidized bed, uh, as, as just seen, and also its global network on sales and uh, uh, connections to uh, different stakeholders. Uh, so this company is uh, basically our technology company when it comes to selling uh, the uh, technology on a worldwide basis. Uh, I promised you to show you an example uh, of development in, 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 in other areas, other industrial areas. So the CFP calcination for producing alumina smelt, um, uh, uh, alumina smelting material, which can then further be smelted to uh, uh, aluminum, is the calcination step. It consumes a lot of energy, and the first generation you see here, and if you are a little bit familiar with the plant in, uh, in Overe, you may see some certain elements, a CFP, uh, a Venturi preheater, an ESP, and cooling stages. So uh, a lot of these technologies have been developed in, in other industries and applied very successful in, in other industries. So this is back in the 1990s. You see an energy consumption was close to 3,000 kilojoule. Uh, okay, it's not per normal cubic meter, it should say per, per ton. Sorry for this. Um, uh, so the second generation was then even uh, another 5% more efficient. And when it comes to the fifth generation, uh, we are again have another step of, uh, of three by introducing uh, a lot of smaller things, but which ha increasingly help uh, improving the efficiency. And what you can see here, the first step was introducing CFP-based calciners, which basically 
brought down the consumption from the traditional way of production in rotary kilns by half. And today we are uh, approaching the theoretical consumptions in energy. So a lot of these calciners have been built and of course from one to the next uh, it's, it's starting uh, to, um, to, be, to be better, to be more reliable and these plants have been of course built in all types, all uh, areas of the world and uh, so and it also got energy prices as you have seen because this is really a revolution in efficiency uh, when it comes to these productions. Coming back to, to oil shale from this um, short um, um, excurs uh, to, uh, for, to another industry, uh, as you might know oil shale is basically spread it quite well around the globe uh, with its biggest resources in the US as known. Uh, considerable resources are also in, in Russia uh, and in, in, the, in Brazil and in Africa, Jordan as well. Uh, and of course Estonia, which has the longest industry, has also considerable resources. Uh, a lot of these of resources are not known and if you look in literature you find uh, all kind of um, resource numbers and uh, oil efficiencies or whatever. So it's, it's still a development what we are looking here. It's not as good database as for example for coal or for other minerals. Uh, when we compare to the, let's say, availability of oil shale as such, which is billions of oil, uh, the production, which you can see here over the years, so basically industrial production only started in the 1930s, 1940s, uh, and uh, so there was a very peak with, when the oil, oil price also peaked internationally in the 70s, 80s, and uh, but today, and roughly in an average, 27 million billions of shale oil, uh, this is only a calculated figures, uh, are produced, uh, which is not, uh, let's say, the much compared to the resource. Um, this figure, I, I would not took it too granted on the numbers which have been given. These are published numbers, for example, uh, I have always doubts the oil sands, I think uh, $90 per barrel is a little bit too much. Uh, I have heard from the oil shale producers, they claim to be, pro uh, to be in the range of $40 to $50, which I think is a little bit too less. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. Truth is that in the moment a lot of these producers, if they are not in a very big scale, uh, have troubles to cope with the, with the oil price. So I, my assumption is that they are somewhere here for the net prices, but it's always what are you included and what not. But I want to, sh want to show you that with the shale oil and it's plus minus uh, five or ten dollars, uh, we are in a good range where we can, on a sustainable basis, produce shale oil, 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 shale, shale oil out of um, oil shale um, when the oil prices are back at a range where they have been for a longer period and we are pretty sure that they will come, come back. So what kind of technologies are available? You basically would like to know this and uh, we oil shale you have basically two possibilities. You can try to put it, uh, to retort it under the earth so you don't extract the oil shale. There's a lot of development, so far no commercial applications, and we have to see what the future brings, uh, what, uh, what is the technology, uh, what can be applied uh, for, let's say, extracting the oil uh, without um, uh, getting the oil shale to the earth. Uh, when we look at the surface retorting, you basically have the uh, I would say traditional vertical retorts where you use gas uh, as a heat carrier. This is, uh, you know, the Kivita uh, retorts here in Estonia, 
in Brazil, Petro 6 retorts uh, are there, and in China, a lot of Fushun retorts are, are operating. I have seen there hundreds of these retorts uh, um, uh, working uh, since decades. Uh, and when it comes to solid heat carriers, where we today believe it's uh, uh, one of the uh, best technologies, uh, we have a development which was based back in Canada, where the first plant has been uh, commissioned in, in China. So no commercial, I would make a question mark here. So it's the first plant has been built. UTT 3000, the further development of the Enefit 140 plant has not been built yet, uh, uh, but it's, avail uh, it's competition on the market. And then we have, of course, the Enefit plant in Estonia. So what are the pros and cons? Um, and I think thank you to, to Indrek. I have uh, <laughs> borrowed your slide here. Uh, so um, you see for the guests, when, when I want not to go to each and every uh, row here, but you, what you may see here, oh, these kind, they have low CO2 emissions. Where does it come from? It's very simple. When you look here at this for the organic waste, so basically you have here organic waste. It's not avoiding organic waste. So of course, every organic, what you do not burn, you do not convert, does not contribute to CO2. But of course, it ends up somewhere in the ash, in the earth, and uh, this irritates the use and is also an uh, environmental problem. Uh, so the best technologies are basically when you have no organic waste or very low organic waste, like in these processes here, and, but you have also tried to limit by high efficiency uh, low CO2 values. And another fig figure is here, it has been mentioned additional revenue streams. So by processing oil shale, you get not only oil, but you also get electrical energy and you get gas. Uh, what you can use. So we have three products uh, out of oil shale. So what are differentiating factors? You may have seen this, uh, the fluidized bed, the circulating fluidized bed, uh, which really gives equal temperature distribution and good temperature control. Um, it com basically combusts the fuel completely, so there is no, um, no left organics. Uh, low SO2 because of, of effective use of the limestone in the oil shale. And uh, one figure I found, so for example, the plant in Estonia is, in over a, is the biggest in the throughput of 800 tons of semi-coke going to the, uh, to the furnace per hour. So if you compare it even to the biggest uh, CFP power station, <laughs> it's more than double uh, of the feed rate. Uh, other elements what have been introduced is basically on the idea of removing rotating equipment. So there are fluidized bed coolers, fluidized bed transportation mechanism, fluidized bed seals uh, where you have high pressure against low pressure and not mixing explosive gases with, uh, with air or such things. So these have been introduced and uh, they work quite well. Um, there was also a lot of talks about efficiency today, so I think there is not much uh, to, to say. This is a balance from, for one ton of oil shale, and you see this is a couple of products. You produce retort gas, you produce energy, and the efficiency is uh, close to 90% if you look at the total, and it's about 64 if you use, look only at the oil shale, that's the shale oil. Uh, whatever you figure you, you like most. And of course, it's uh, dependent on the assumptions, so you may see different, uh, little bit different figures if you see different calculations. Uh, and when it comes to CO2 emissions, a big contributor is, of course, if you have limestone in it, you get uh, a, a decomposition of these uh, carbonates, which contributes to the CO2. And, uh, but when you look at the figures in the literature, the plant, uh, the plant in Overay is uh, at the lower end of the CO2 emissions. And if you can use, for example, the ash and cement plants, you would even be lower. Uh, we have a pilot plant. EOT owns a pilot plant in the research center in Frankfurt. 
where we can test all kinds of oil shales in the world uh, to, uh, on, a, on a quite uh, significant basis with 300 kilograms an hour and also get information about the oil shale quality. So just to sum up, so we see us as a reliable partner in the development and we believe that there is a market for oil out of oil shale in the world and once energy prices, uh, oil prices raise up again, we are prepared to sell that and we have different projects in the world uh, where we are ready to go um, and uh, we think we can be quite successful here to also export the Estonian technology uh, to the world. Thank you very much for having me here and I'm happy to answer some questions. Thank you, Andres. I, I sum up in Estonia and then we hopefully take some questions uh, in English again so that you will understand it. Et ma võtaksid paar olulist asja kaasa, et esiteks nägite, et peale selle, et me oleme sada aastat Eestis põlevkiviga midagi peale hakkanud, täna pool maailmas kaevaldatavast põlevkivist kaevandatakse Eestis. Ja sellest omakorda siis suur osa kaevab Eesti energia. Ja mis on veel väga oluline, et te nägite, et maailmas on väga suured põlevkivarud ja miks need ei ole kasutatud, on väga lihtne põhjus, et seda ei ole suudetud mõistlikult teha, et energiat on saadud mujalt lihtsalt odamalt. Aga täna ka see, mis te siit nägite, et oma siis uue uute projektidega me oleme päris sellises reaas, et kus me suudame konkureerida. Ja nüüd on küsimus, isegi ei ole mitte selles, et mis see õli hind täna just hetkel on, vaid ta pigem selles, et kuidas me sinna Ritta mahutume. Ja kui me suudame olla seal konkurentse võimelised, siis maailma energivajadus kaetakse kuidagi ära ja selge on see, et maailma energivajadus ei vähene, vaid ta kasvab natuke aeglasemalt, kui ta varem kasvas. Nii et siin võib-olla tõesti, et Eesti energia ei võta ette kinisvara projekte maailmas, aga küll me arvame, et meil on midagi maailmale pakkuda tehnoloogia vallas, kus me ilmtingimate pea ise olema massiivsed kapeksinvesteerijad ja suudame pakkuda siiski tehnoloogiat, mis on ennast juba tõestanud ja mis on selline, millega on võimalik teinida tulu. Nii et peale selle, et Autotec pakub meile nii-öelda tehnoloogist tuge, et see tehnoloogia kaantevahele saada, on meil ka globaalne müügivõrk ja me usume, et et see innovatsioon aitab Eesti tööstusinnovatsiooni kogemusega ühel päeval siiski maailmasse viia. Aga nüüd, kas Andres on küsimusi kohe? Jah, inglis keeles. Põduks mikrofoni kõjaks juhuks siia, et siis... Jah, palun. Arvoos. What you open about the burning semi-coke and... Utilization gas sometimes in the CFP boiler, but mm. now it is uh, separate. Mm. The gas is burning on the power plants and the semi coke on the CFP boiler. And uh, what you open, we, if we burn gas and semi coke in same unit, yeah. fluid does better than a lot. You, yeah. You may know about yeah. it. No, th thank, you, thank you for that question. And it, it has been studied, um, especially when you have oil shales which have a ho high calorific value, so more than you can convert into oil, like, uh, like in, in, in the US, for example, you have such oil shales. And then what to do with the gas? And you can burn it in the CFP, uh, but it enlarges the CFP, of course. There is a lot of calorific value, much more than in the semi-coke. So you have a low calorific value fuel and a high calorific value fuel. So the whole installation and the, the investment cost will be ruled by the burning of gas. And then the competition or the question is, is it not better to burn the gas in a separate unit where you can do it high efficient and not mixing it up? Uh, but this is, an, let's say, in the end, an economic uh, consideration, uh, what you do. Technology-wise, you are right, it's, it's possible and doable. Thank you. Kas on meil küsimusi? 
Meil on saalis päris mitmed Eesti kõrkkoolid esindajad, kes on põlevi tehnoloogiat, aga suurepärased kursis ja on kursis ka nende samade arendustega, nii et me sihtisime ilmselt niimoodi keskmist kuulajad siin, et need, kes esimest korda asjast kursid ära jookseks ja teistel ka väga igavi hakkaks, nii et loodame, et see õnnestus. Okei, Andreas, thank you so much at the moment. Thank you.